Uh oh, we got a skunk, y'all. <laughs> Crud. Right on a curve, too. Wouldn't want a truck to come flying around. Wouldn't want to get sprayed. There he goes. Okay, we had to give him his space. Pew! Skunk le pew! Pepe le pew. We found him. He may be banned from the internet, but he's out here with us, y'all. He's out here. He's still alive and well. Pepe le pew. Seeing skunks out in the day like that always reminds me of rabies. Because skunks don't normally come out during the day. So that one very well may have had rabies. Uh, one or two days ago, animal control in Gainesville, which I'm right, I'm just north of Gainesville right now. They, um, they killed a skunk and it tested positive for rabies. The reason they killed the skunk, actually I don't know the full story, maybe somebody's dog killed the skunk, but for whatever reason, this person's dog came in contact with the skunk. Animal control tested the skunk, the skunk tested positive for rabies. So that's something we've got to be thinking about in the spring and throughout the summer. That we really didn't have to worry as much about throughout the winter. We've got to be prepared for a rabid animal to come after us. So I use this trekking pole <clears throat> and I use my air horn to scare off the dogs. But when something with rabies like a coyote or a dog or a raccoon with rabies comes after you, it can be really scary. It can be, it can feel overwhelming. So the thing about rabies is that if you get, if you get bitten and you develop symptoms of rabies, your chances of survival is, are zero. Rabies is 100% fatal and it's very common. So you cannot risk getting bit by a dog like this with no rabies vaccination. These country animals, they, they go after those skunks and their owners don't, and they're not responsible enough to even keep them from running in the road, much less vaccinate them. So you get bitten by a rabid dog and you develop rabies, you're, you're going to die. So you need to treat that like it's a threat. Those attacks, like they're a threat to your life because they are, they're a serious threat to your life. Oh, they want a deer. Wow. Oh, several deer. Man, we're close to town. And uh, we're in a real pretty wooded area. I don't normally see deer right there. I heard something and then I just kept going and I heard some, some more rustling in the bushes. I looked over there and I saw a doe. Then I heard some more rustling, so there's definitely deer in there. I saw one for sure. I heard others. So that's pretty cool. We're so close to town. We may even be in the city limits. I don't know. So when I heard that rustling in the bushes, I had to be prepared for a rabid animal to come out and attack me. It was a deer, several deer. Deer can get rabies, but they're not going to, they, you know, they're herbivores. They're not going to go attack you like a coyote bear or mountain lion coyote being the most likely scenario but i had to be prepared anything's possible even a tiger did you know that there are more tigers kept in captivity just in texas than there are tigers in the wild and you know watching tiger king you could see that the kind of people who own tigers are irresponsible and not capable of sound judgment and so those kind of people they may let their tigers go in the spring you know you never know they may have let an 800 pound siberian tiger go so here i am with my trucking pole attacked by an 800 pound siberian tiger and i've got to come out on top that's the mentality that you have to have out here if you want to be ready for anything because that's 
Those are all possible scenarios. There are so many possibilities that I can't even think of them all. You just gotta be ready when they unfold because anything can happen. The world is a creative place. You gotta be prepared for creative attacks on your life, on you. So anyway, that's my my little uh, heads up warning about going into spring and summer. A lot more wildlife out there. And rabies, a lot more rabies out there.